Hey everyone, it's Strange Michael. I hope you're doing well today. I am going to continue today with the reviews for Silent Night, Deadly Night as a whole series. Uh, this is for part four, which is called uh, one of two titles. The original title was Initiation, Silent Night, Deadly Night 4. The title that it was changed to after the fact with the posters and everything else is Silent Night, Deadly Night 4, Initiation. Of course, I have this three pack here with parts three, four, and five in it. Um, so close, I'm over the halfway point. Uh, to me, to me, this is the last of the rougher movies in the series. I've only seen this film one time before about two years ago when I bought all these movies and wanted to watch them. Right around the time I first got married, as a matter of fact. Uh, well, it wasn't really two years ago. Somewhere in that ballpark. Anyway, Silent Night, Deadly Night 4, Initiation, doesn't really have any no noticeable faces or recognizable faces. One of them is Clint Howard, another one is Reggie Bannister there in this. Um, Reggie Bannister's not in it that much. Of course, he's from the Phantasm series itself. But uh, Clint Howard is in this playing kind of a major role in here, on an oddball role, too. He's already an odd fellow with some odd things under his belt anyway for different roles he played in, uh, like the Ice Cream Man, which is a great flick. I love it. Uh, it's horrible, <laughs> but I love it so much. I'm very nostalgic about that movie. But to see him in this was pretty cool. But he's not a main character. Our pretty much main character is a journalist for, I don't know what she is, it's some kind of the LAI or something, <laughs> like Los Angeles, and then the logo is an eyeball. Um, anyway, uh, this book is mainly about this girl that wants to be a journalist. She's sleeping around with a co-worker and whatnot, and they kind of are starting to blossom into a real relationship. Before we even get introduced to this character, our kind of prologue to this movie is Clint Howard being a homeless man walking around a weird building looking for trash burgers and stuff. <laughs> <laughs> yes, he's eating hamburgers out of the trash. Literally picks it up, lifts up the bun and says, Oh, no cheese. <laughs> Something like that. And starts eating it. He looks up and a woman jumps off a building and she's on fire, mind you. And she lands on the ground. And uh, the first time I saw this movie, I didn't entirely understand what was happening here. The woman's on fire. She falls off the top of the building. And later on, you get an outline <laughs> where somebody is looking over the edge of a building or something, looking down on the pavement where this woman had fallen off and the crime scene was reported and whatever by the cops. Of course, they do the body outline. It's one of the funniest things I've ever seen in my life because they outlined the torso and just the bottom of the body was just completely on fire, not the torso. So the burn marks on the ground are just where the legs were. They didn't outline that part or something. It was hilarious. It's one of the funniest things I've ever seen in a movie my entire life. It looks like something that would come out of a Leslie Nielsen comedy. Um, <laughs> so the movie, I have a very weird relationship with. Of course, the original movie, I kind of have my moments I enjoy it. most of it I don't. Uh, the second film, kind of the same situation, mostly bummed about all the recapping. The third movie is horrible. <laughs> it's absolutely awful. There's so many bad things. Even to have the good old Bill Mosley in there from Devil's Rejects, it's a piece of trash. This one, it... To me, it's slightly better than part three. Not by much, not by much. But I will say this, it has some great draws to it. Um, this reporter girl that we're following as our main character uh, kind of get ties into this whole Clint Howard thing and some women that he is involved with that may or may not be witches. <laughs> and uh, they start to somehow get involved with our main character journalist girl. And I'm gonna tell you straightforward, man. I don't wanna tell you too much about the plot. I wanna leave it at the witchcraft thing. But I'll tell you, there is some body horror in this movie that's phenomenal. I mean, just effective, phenomenal work. And it's directed, by the way, by Brian Yuzna. Yuzna? I don't know how to say his name, but he's the director of um, Return of the Living Dead Part 3, which I have not seen. I just wanted to mention that in case you guys wanted a name drop or something you might like. I don't know. I haven't heard good things about that movie, but <laughs> I just thought a name drop something. Um, there's some fantastic body horror in here, and the way the film is kind of sleazily shot, it's very cheesy, very 1980s, even though it came out in 1990, by the way. Uh, I forgot to mention that part. It has a very cheesy, low-quality feel to it in a lot of ways. The film is very slow. That's my biggest complaint about it. It's too slow. It should be like an hour long as a movie, in my opinion. But the body horror, and in my personal opinion, the special effects, which are pretty much just practical effects throughout the whole movie, they look phenomenal. The body horror is scary. A lot of the time it involves the practical effects, but the practical effects don't just stop there. There can be other set pieces and other certain things in this movie that involve the practical effects that look phenomenal. I mean, it just really, really makes this movie overall. If you like practical effects movies, you should watch this one. There's some great stuff in here. The movie is very dreamlike. It's very uh, nightmarish in a lot of ways, and I enjoy that about it. I really dig that part of it. 
It's not a perfect move by any means. Like I said, it's a little too slow for my taste. The acting is fine. I don't really think anybody's particularly bad in the movie, but I will be honest, it's so slow that sometimes I was looking at my phone and looking at Reddit and stuff every once in a while, so take that as you may. But I most of the time pretty much pay attention to every second of a movie that I'm watching for this review channel. I do think the directing is competent for a direct-to-video film like this, but I was more concerned with the practical effects and the body horror and stuff because the acting wasn't amazing, <laughs> you know? Glenn Howard has some really weird, weird, weird moments in this movie. Very weird moments. And there's quite a bit of nudity in here, too. Very much like the original Silent Night, Deadly Night. But this isn't a slasher flick at all. This is not a slasher flick like the previous three. Um, this is kind of an art house type of movie, which I think is going to lose a lot of fans when they come to this. You know, if you put out a bunch of horror stories and you start writing romance and your audience is buying your ebooks, they're probably going to be like, oh, I'm good, man. You know, you've changed up the formula on them. And I've said it before and I'll say it again, the real standout about this series is that each movie is so drastically different and unique in their own oddball ways and goofball ways and straight-to-video ways with the different types of styles and directions they tried to go. This one's barely a Christmas movie, almost at all. I think I said in a previous video that it was not at all, but it's because I didn't remember any kind of real Christmas focus on this movie. But there is quite a bit. It's not a big Christmas movie, though. Uh, it's kind of a Christmas movie as much as Die Hard is a Christmas movie, you know what I mean? It's uh, kind of in the background, not really too in the focus. There's maybe one conversation revolving around the entire thing. But again, there's some great stuff in here, some grotesque great stuff that I loved. Um, if you're a splatterpunk type of fan, not so much in like the uh, spray the blood everywhere, which is usually what a splatterpunk type of thing is, but if you're more of a body horror splatterpunk fan, this is for you. This is totally for you. I think you will dig the shit out of this movie. It has so much going for it. Um, the problem is that it doesn't completely execute it perfectly. It is a little too slow for my taste. Um, I don't mind slow burn movies at all, but I think this is a little bit too draggy because it doesn't have enough... It doesn't have enough meat there. Does it make sense? Like, have you ever seen an art house film like, uh, like Saint Maud, for example? I recently reviewed that a couple of weeks ago. If you've seen Saint Maud, if you just called it a drama about a woman taking care of a, a lady with cancer, you really wouldn't get much out of that. It's all the little nuances and the little, the little um, you know, kind of background underlining themes and whatnot that really make that movie stand out even more. And this film has a little bit of that, not by much, but it's, it's not enough to really develop this movie. If you had a better script and better acting, you could really develop and prop up those practical effects and stuff that I think most horror fans would appreciate that part of this movie. But anyway, that's pretty much my thoughts on Silent Night, Deadly Night 4, Initiation. It's not a great flick. It's very middle of the road over a lot of things. I wish I could give it a higher rating than I did, <laughs> but it's just a, it's a big, big half-and-half -half mixture of a movie for me. I wish it was better than it is, but it's a boring flick. Um, and, and it's, it's sad for that, because the body horror is fantastic. Instead of, like, every 10 minutes something horrific happening, it's really, like, every 15 to 20, which does lose you a lot of time. I know it sounds stupid and petty to put it like that, like I don't have the attention span for it, but sometimes you don't. I'll be honest with you, sometimes you don't. But with this one, it's not a complete loss. If you bought this DVD pack and you're already pissed because you watched three and it's horrible, stick around for four. Initiation is a big, big upgrade, in my opinion, even though it's not part of the slasher motive to this series. Um... But it's still a big, hard-hitting flick in a lot of ways. I do recommend it because it's so odd. It's one of those horrifically... It's one of those movies that are so not up to standard to what it should be because of how great so many other parts of it are that it actually makes you uncomfortable. Kind of like Halloween from Rob Zombie, the first one, and kind of the second one, too. I like both of those movies quite a bit, but there's a lot of it that really needed to be improved upon to make it a better classic movie, in my opinion. Uh, the brutal parts of them are fantastic, <laughs> seriously. But this is one of those situations. It's so uh, uneven, you know? I think it's the word I want to use. It's so uneven that it really makes me uncomfortable. I don't know how to explain it. Maybe it's the body horror stuff. I don't know, but there's some great ones in here, dude. Uh, anyway, if I had to rate Silent Night, Deadly Night 4 initiation on a five-star basis, I would give it about a three out of five stars. It might sound higher than it deserves to a lot of you folks. I know it has some very, very low ratings on IMDb, which surprises me, but with the kind of fans we have nowadays in horror as a community. Um, I think a lot more people appreciate body horror nowadays than they ever did back in the day. It was kind of considered distasteful back in the day from what I could tell from uh, different audience comments and what I see on YouTube and uh, different sites. But anyway, that's my personal opinion. Three out of five stars. I do think it's better than part three. 
probably part two as well. I'm not really sure. Of course, I will have a ranking video at some point in case you want to check out my ranking for all six of these Silent Night, Deadly, Deadly Night movies. We've got two more to go. I hope you'll stick around and subscribe and watch those reviews as well. They're coming up soon, <laughs> hopefully by uh, this weekend. I don't know for sure. I'll try, but I don't want to promise that to you because it's been a little hectic. Christmas is coming up. But anyway, thank you guys for watching. Uh, Merry Christmas. What are your thoughts on this particular movie? Put that down in the comment section down below. I'd love to hear what you have to say about it this time around. And uh, is this your favorite of the franchise? Is this the most, I would say this is probably the most unique out of the whole series. Probably the most uh, ambitious, honestly. <laughs> Seriously, I mean that. It's probably the most ambitious out of all of them, uh, even the remake. Anyway, what are your thoughts? Put them down below. Three out of five stars for me. Thank you for watching. God bless you. Merry Christmas once again, and goodbye.